All right. No, not quite. All right, we have a quorum, so we're going to go ahead and convene this meeting at 7.09. We are still in the city council chambers here at City Hall. Uh, as promised, we're going to do the uh, public uh, hearing on soccer first. Um, good, everybody remembers. <laughs> we'll go fast. We... Uh, our hope is to do soccer and then to actually do the ballot uh, issue that we have for November and maybe even do the uh, uh, economic development chapter 380 stuff all tonight. Uh, but that means we're going to have to like book. So I'm going to try to minimize the time between speakers. Uh, you'll find that that will get all of you out of here an hour earlier than you would have otherwise. So I'm going to call multiple names. I'm going to ask people to kind of line up at the podium so that we are constantly uh, having people come in. Under our rules, the first 20 people that speak uh, will, get one, uh, will get three minutes each. Every person after the first 20 gets one minute. You can donate uh, time up to two people to someone. Uh, we're calling both these items together which means you can either speak or donate time tonight, but you can't speak and donate time. So you have to pick if you're speaking or if you're donating time. I say that because we see that some people have signed up on one item and have donated time on the other item, which we're not going to do. So you just have to pick which it is that you want to do. Uh, I'm going to call 10 people against. I'm going to call 10 people for uh, the, 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 the proposition. Uh, there are, um, um, and I'm going to uh, uh, take probably uh, them in, in proportion to these two items as to the number of people that have signed up. So we're going to uh, begin uh, the process with uh, uh, Marisa Perryman. Is Marisa Perryman here? Why don't you come on up? Is uh, Linda Messier here? Okay, so you're going to have two, three minutes plus one minute, so you're going to have four minutes total time. Is uh, uh, Judy Garibay here? You can be there. You'll have three minutes. Is uh, Francoise Luca here? Why don't you come on up? Is Mary Ingle here? Mary Ingle? No? You'll have, uh, Ms. Ms. Luca, you'll have three minutes. Mayor, Is, I've donated time. No, to Marissa. Oh, she donated her minutes. Yeah. Got that. That got you your four minutes. Mm -hmm. Three minutes, three minutes. Uh, Susan Spataro, okay. And then you have time donated by Brad Parsons. Is he here? God, thank you. And Andrew uh, Alemel? Okay. So, uh, uh, Susan, you'll have five minutes. Three plus one plus one. Uh, and then uh, just um, uh, two more uh, people. Is Chad Benestante here? Why don't you come on down? And then uh, is uh, um, is Jorge Chavez here? You're gonna. Why don't you come on down too? Is uh, you have some time donated from uh, Jordan uh, Lesmeister? Is Jordan Lesmeister here? No. Then you just have the three minutes. When the person's, make sure you introduce yourself so that the clerk has the name and so that I get the name so I can cross off. Uh, and let's go ahead and begin. And Mayor. Yes. Um, maybe after the first batch of speakers, if we could fix the $300,000 error we made on our bonds, that would be helpful. Maybe after the first batch of speakers. Okay. Please start. Four right. minutes. Good evening, Austin City Council. My name is Marissa Perryman. Uh, I think you remember me. I hope you all received my email addressing the funding question uh, about my park proposal and how the Play for All a park in Round Rock was built with only $500,000 of city funds. Uh, the rest was all generously donated by the community. And I would like to point out that that 500, I'm sorry, it's 600,000. And I would like to point out that that's only 20% more than we signed away to PSB in their earnest money contract. Um, I hope you consider our community proposal seriously before dismissing it, uh, dismissing the true economic benefits and community benefits of a park 
As many of you said on Ju June 28th, there are some community benefits that just cannot be measured in dollars, and I couldn't agree more. And I would like to, you to all to know that it was those of you who shared that sentiment that truly inspired my proposal, so thank you. Um, now the rest of this of my minutes are going to be spent addressing the people who are here to speak today and who are signed up to speak. And I just want uh, to say that if you trust the opinion of locals who have done our research on this, frequented meetings and participated in discussion and aren't sure exactly where you stand on the issue, here is a guide to see where on the issue you fall and what to tell our esteemed members of the city council. If you believe that public owned land should be used for public cause, please tell your representatives to say no to item 19 and yes to 109. If you believe that our leaders should be environmentally responsible, please tell council to say no to item 19 and push for full environmental analysis before any agreement is made. If you believe that public uses for public land should come before private for-profit enterprise out of towners, please tell council to vote no on item 19 and yes to 109. If you think we have enough mixed use domain style developments in North Austin, please tell our representatives to consider civic uses for public land and vote yes to 109 and no to item 19. If you think that traffic around the domain is bad enough as it is, please tell your representatives that this isn't the best place for a stadium. If you think the city should wait until they have enough money to maintain our existing parks before they go giving away freebies, please express this to our council. <coughs> if you think a 20,000 person stadium should have more than 1,000 parking spots, please urge council to get real and vote no on item 19. If you think that city that the city of Austin is losing its culture due to our growth pattern, please tell council to stick to the slogan, keep Austin weird and support local businesses before courting out of town enterprises. Please tell council to vote no on item 19. If you think that children today need more time outdoors and that lower income families deserve affordable housing, near amenities and mass transit, transit please let council members know. If you think that Anthony Precor, son of a billionaire, should pay taxes or simply buy his own land, please tell city council this. If you think that Anthony Precor is totally trying to play us, please let Austin City Council know and say no to a stadium. On the other hand, if you think this soccer stadium is actually going to happen, Precor is actually going to keep his word to our city, despite his track record, that he didn't start all this hype to try and run out the clock on his ongoing lawsuit, and that he's truly willing to build a $200 million stadium when he could build one in his team's hometown where fans are rallying to save their team for $100 million, then please, by all means, let council know that you would like a soccer stadium. But I truly hope you're right. Now to my fellow parents, I ask that you consider the message that you're sending when you tell your kids that soccer is more important than struggling families' right to a home that they can afford. Thank you very and much. And just remember that your so, voice is far more valuable than a so free There are so many scarf. people that are going to be here speaking tonight. Thank you. So many people. Uh, the next speaker is Judy Garibay. You have three minutes. Hello, my name is Judy Garibay. All the proposals have been brought to you. I would challenge you to find one that it that is even in the same league as Marissa Perryman's Keep Makala Weird. She has come up with a concept for Makala Place that epitomizes the city of Austin. The Keep Austin Weird moniker has many meanings. Austin is home to a landscape of talent, individuals, and celebrations such as Eeyore's birthday party that keep Austin weird. But Austin is also unique in its vision that makes it not just another big city, but a center for music and the arts, adding parkland that teaches our children our future about nature would bring immeasurable benefits. The Texas Children and Nature Organization has long known that time spent in nature makes children healthier, happier, and smarter. Active, unstructured play outdoors helps build a child's physical strength and also helps children build social and emotional skills such as problem solving and self-esteem. 
interest in sports games will wax and wane, but providing a green space for children to use their imagination never gets old. Does Austin really want a soccer stadium or does Austin want to create a nature preserve for our children and our families? Austin is weird and Austin is also forward thinking. Make Macalo Weird by Marissa Perryman a reality. Also, I find it ludicrous that you are considering to up the ante on pre-court to include fees, etc. You are piecemealing this deal because they will not pay property tax. Please do not accept pre-court's pre proposal. It is not a good fit for Austin. Thank you. I think I also saw some time from David King. Is David King here? So you're donating your time tonight. You have four minutes. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council. My name is Francoise Luca. I'm a taxpayer, a voter in District 7. So tonight is not just about soccer. I know the passion of soccer. My family is deeply involved in soccer. My sister was one of the first women uh, soccer players at UT. My son plays soccer. My niece is playing soccer for SMU this season. And actually, um, I went to 5 o'clock mass um, so I could go see the World Cup final. So we understand the passion of soccer. But this is not about soccer. This is about a lousy real estate transaction that is not good for our citizens. You must be very tired tonight because I know, as most of the other voters in this room watching this item, that the updated term sheet was released at 9 p.m. last night to the media first and then posted to the city website at 10 p.m. This is unacceptable. How can you, your staff, the media, the public possibly be prepared today to vote on this term sheet? This version is worse than the first one. It doesn't address the transportation issues that Ms. Garza uh, mentioned. As a matter of fact, it doesn't address any of the issues raised by Mayor Pro Tem, by Ms. Kitchen, Ms. Alter, or Mr. Renteria, or Mr. Flanagan. Who is negotiating this deal on behalf of the people of Austin? They're not listening, or they're doing a very poor job. This term sheet is so favorable to pre-court and so dangerously risky for the city's interests. It needs much, much more work and due diligence. I would like to formally request that this item be postponed to at least August 23rd to allow the proper review by all citizens of this new proposal. I've been here all day, as I'm sure you've seen me, and the theme of today has been equity, about putting our people and our local businesses first in our public policy and in our city's business decision. There has been a lot of discussion about broken promises and broken trust today. And one way to repair some of this distrust is to support a respected and proven city process like a request for proposal for McCullough. We have the opportunity to create a new community within a neighborhood that will create millions of dollars in property taxes for our education, our public health, and for social good forever. To do this, we must issue an RFP and let our local business community compete, bring forward their skills and creativity to the table to bring out a new neighborhood in the second downtown. Please. Imagine 30 years from now, your names will be on a plaque at McCullough. Will it be on a stadium that is about to be demolished? Or will it be on a civic center, park, or housing community? Thank you. Susan Spitaro, um, I would like to start out again by saying you know, your, your budget parameters are a government that works for all. This project does not work for all. It works for a few. It values entertainment and wants over the needs of this community, and it's a serious situation. 
I want to start with parking and then <laughs> kind of the funny place to start in traffic. But I want to read from a statement that the president of Precourt, Dave Greeley, made to the Austin American Statesman in February 21st, 2018. This is Greeley. Immediate challenge is access, he said. The first time I went there, I couldn't find it. You go to Paragon Print Shop, stop and look left. Short of drone deliveries, I'm not sure how you get fans in there. It's kind of a donut hole in the middle of a donut, and nothing has changed. It is sitting there with a, a plan of a 1,000 parking places with no plan to get people in and out. That plan needs to be written. You need to know where people are coming from. Now what they're saying is, well, we will use shuttles. From where? <laughs> Those, that's the kind of specificity you need. Where are you going to shuttle them from? Where does the shuttle line up? to get 20,000 people in that building. Each bus, 55 people. So, you know, they pull up, stop there, unload, and they're, they're all over those roads and shut them down. So parking is a serious situation. There needs to be a solution before you vote on this. They have had time to do this. They want, they are in a hurry. They should have quit whining and dining and worked on these kinds of things. Where is the parking going to be? Okay, the next thing I would like to speak of is property taxes. And you know, I kind of like listening to your budget. I know it's, it's sick. I'm from government and like these things. But, um, you know, some of the things you said struck a note, and that is, you know, you're looking to go for a 6% increase on property taxes. And one of you said, but people here haven't gotten a 6% raise. How will they afford it? See, this won't affect Precord because they won't pay any taxes. So they don't have to worry about 6% or anything. You talked about bonds, all the things you need in bonds, and you hope people here will support those bonds. They don't have to worry about bonds because they're not going to pay for it. They will not be com contributing to this community what they need to do because they are not paying property taxes. They are not paying a lease payment that is even close to market. And one could say, well, are there other alternatives? And all of you who sat through um, those the other nights, there's wonderful alternatives. And those, by the way, are opportunity cost. Affordable housing is critical in this community. We have to be concerned about these people. They can't be just set aside. The proposals you looked at, and I, though I'm just going to refer to one, the one with the most affordable housing, 838 units, $11 million a year in property taxes, and they will pay for the rail station. How can we disregard that kind of a proposal for someone who is paying no taxes, um, uh, less than market lease, and has no traffic plan for that area? It just plain isn't fair. The opportunity cost, and you all talked about that early on, really what that means is you compare it to something else, and you saw the kind of proposals that you had. And I would suggest that, you know, you can't take those at face value, but a formal RFP process needs to be put out. Because what's important is the people who live here, the people who need affordable housing. I know people love soccer, and I've heard how passionate they are, but folks, it's a game. I mean, yeah, it's fun, but it's not like not having a place to live. And that's really the basic trade-off that you're making. Everyone deserves a home. And we have children and families in this community that not only do not have a home now, but are looking at losing their homes. One of the things, and this is just kind of a last comment that I would like to make is, you know, there was a lot of Ballyhoo last time, about three, 367 people showed up, and, and most of them supported soccer. Well, you know what was interesting? And that is that 122 of those people did not know where they lived. I would say they probably don't live in the city of Austin. And of that 122, 105 were for MLS. Okay, there were 30 that said they were not residents. 29 supported MLS. And I think that's important because the people that do not live in the city of Austin will not be impacted negatively like those that live here. So the truth is, you need to make a decision. And those of you who have supported this have given Precourt more than a fair chance. You have. And 
nothing happens. <laughs> nothing definitive. There is no clarity. We don't know where the training facility is going to be. Are we going to give more land for that? We don't know where they're going to practice for two years. What's the traffic situation out there? Um, the community benefits are slim to none, and they benefit just their organization. So I implore you, I know this is an exciting thing and you're under a lot of pressure, but we need affordable housing. Everyone needs to pay their taxes here. It's the fair thing to do. And I thank you for these late meetings and sitting here listening. Thank you very much. Good evening, council members. My name is Chad Benestante. I am a District 5 resident, and I'm an Austin voter. And thanks for having me tonight. Um, good news, I'm not going to take the full three minutes. So I'm just going to um, just got a couple of facts I want to hit you guys with. I know you've been hearing a lot of opinion on this matter. It's been pretty heated. but. Um, people have been saying this is a bad deal, okay? I've got two places that think this would probably be a great deal, and that's Nashville and Cincinnati, okay? Now, if you guys don't know, these are two cities that just acquired expansion teams MLS, and they are um, building stadiums. So I want to talk a little bit about what they're laying, what the cities are giving up so they can get their stadium built. Nashville is issuing $225 million in revenue bonds, okay? Um, what that means is they're going to be saddled with uh, $13 million in annual debt. Okay, This is according to the Tennessee and the Nashville newspaper. Um, in addition, uh, they are not going to pay um, any property tax on the stadium. They will pay property tax on the part of the um, development that is for mixed use, but on the stadium itself, no property tax. Okay, uh, Cincinnati, same kind of situation. $200 million in revenue bonds. Um, there, again, will be no property tax paid on the station, on the stadium. Um, they are going to be on the hook for $33.9 million to prep the site. That could go up to $45 million um, based upon uh, the way the deal is structured due to interest, okay? But you're probably saying, okay, that's Cincinnati, that's Nashville, let's talk, let's talk Texas, right? This is Texas, okay? In 2005, Frisco was able to build a stadium for 55, I'm sorry, $84 million, okay? Sounds quaint, doesn't it? Um, of that, the city of Frisco picked up $55 million. That was 65% of the tab that Frisco had to pick up to build that stadium. In 2010, Houston built a stadium for the Dynamo, um, $101 million. We all to bargain at that date. Uh, the Harris County and Houston Sports Authority picked up $40.6 million of, um, of that cost, and that's 39% of the cost, okay? I won't rehash the terms of the pre-court deal because everyone in this room knows what it is, right? I'm just going to give you guys a direct quote from Chris Dunleavy. You guys, you guys know who he is, right? He's the partner of the firm that helped the city um, kind of uh, negotiate with pre-court. And I quote, he says, PSV is definitely taking the risk for the amount of capital they're committing to finance this thing. And I think with the teeth that got put into the um, you know, non-relocation clause last night, the fact that they have to pay a million dollars if they break the lease every year, the fact that they have to tear the stadium down if they leave, I think it's a no-brainer for the city, okay? Look. I love Austin, okay? I, I work here, I live here, I vote here, I'm raising my family here, okay? I'm a soccer fan. Second, I'm an Austinite first, okay? And, I mean, look, affordable housing, parkland, uh, um, you know, traffic, those are all big issues facing our city. But I believe that this stadium provides the most benefit for the greatest amount of citizens in Austin, okay? And, I mean, look around. Look at the size of this crowd. Do you see people showing up wearing t-shirts like for another mixed-use development, <laughs> you know, like the Post Lamar or something like that or another domain? No. Guys, Austin wants soccer. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> You're Mr. Chavez? Sorry. What's your name? Uh, Jorge Chavez. Hang on one second. Sure. Uh, is um, is uh, Anthony Simmons here? Why don't you come on down? I think you have three minutes. Is Kitrid Evans here? Why don't you come on down? Get in line, please. Is uh, Monica Guzman here? No. Is um, uh, Chad, what we just heard from him, is Susan Searles here? Susan Searles? Yeah. What about uh, Susana Almanza? All right, why don't you come on down? Um, And then I think you had some time that was donated to you. Um, hmm? For for Susana Almanza, is Kevin Weir here? Is Mary Jane Weir here? 
No? So, Susan, I think you have three minutes. Uh, is um, Andrew Urban here? Why don't you come on down? Uh, Stephen McGee? Steve McGee, you'll be in line. And the last person we're going to put in line right now is going to be uh, Jackie uh, Pope. Jackie Pope here. Okay, you come on down and get in line too. Go ahead. Introduce yourself.